All right, thank you everyone for joining us for today's Spotlight Series for Engineering Management with Professor Giza Botlick. My name is Erin Tanaka and I represent the Viterbi Admission and Student Engagement Office within the Viterbi School of Engineering. So I'm very excited to have Professor Botlick today to share information about the Engineering Engineering Management Program. He is the director of the Engineering Management Program, so of course he brings so much insight and expertise in that area. Um, but just a couple things that we're going to go through, so we'll go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, I just wanted to mention that you will receive a copy of today's presentation within a couple of business days. So um, we will send you a follow-up email and one of the links will be a copy of the PDF copy of the presentation. So no need to jot um, the links down. There's going to be some links, especially towards the end of the presentation, but no need to jot those down unless you need them right away. And then in addition, I do encourage you to use the Q&A panel throughout the session. Um, I also um, wanted to introduce my colleague, Megan Balding. She is online to um, panel today's session, so she will be able to answer any questions that are particularly more um, on a personalized basis. But we will be able to answer your questions that you have for Professor Botlick, um, as well as myself. And so definitely feel free to ask those questions definitely be sure to use the Q&A panel, that way we can see them and we will get to those questions during the Q&A session. So for today's program, I will start out by talking a little bit about the University of Southern California for those of you that may not be as familiar with the school. I will then talk about the USC Viterbi School of Engineering, but specifically we're going to talk about the Master of Science in Engineering Management, and we'll give a program overview, um, including the curriculum of the program, as well as the application criteria. Um, I will also take some time to talk about Den of Viterbi, which is our online delivery method. So for those of you, especially if you're undecided, I will be going through some of the differences between our online delivery versus on campus. Um, we'll also talk about the tuition and funding. And then as I mentioned, of course, you will have the opportunity to ask any questions at the end of the session um, during the Q&A. So um, if you ask questions in the Q&A panel throughout the session, those will also be answered as well. So for those of you that have not been to USU's campus, um, just some snapshots of our beautiful campus out in uh, sunny Southern California, although today it's a little bit gloomy, <laughs> and a little bit about USC. So we are the oldest private university in the Western United States. We were founded way back in 1880. Currently we have over 47,000 students and our graduate student population actually outnumbers our undergrads at over 27,000 27, graduate students. That's including our master's students, both online and on campus, as well as our PhD students and graduate certificate students as well. We have well over 4,400 full-time faculty members many of which come from a variety of different um, backgrounds, of course, and we also have adjunct faculty that come from a variety of different industries um, while also um, teaching within the classroom. So they really bring that, that insight to the classroom. We also have a very diverse student population. So we have students from all over the country in multiple countries throughout the world. And, and so you name it, a country, a name a country and likely have a student that is pursuing their program right now. And we are located in Los Angeles, so I know I saw that a bunch of you are from all over the world. And so um, if you're not familiar with Los Angeles or, you know, California in general. So we are located in Southern California and we really are really in the middle of all the action. So we're about a 10 to 15 minute drive from the downtown Los Angeles area. We also are about a 45 minute drive depending on traffic um, to the Silicon Beach area. So in terms of from an uh, engineering and technical perspective, you know, there's a lot of companies um, that hire engineers, our engineering students, and of course our computer science students as well. Um, but, you know, as a whole, USC is really well connected to a variety of industries and, um, and very known in terms of uh, being able to have a fantastic career outlook because of those relationships throughout the world. 
So a little bit about the Viterbi School specifically. So we are comprised of eight academic departments. So those academic departments span a variety of different areas. Of course, um, we are today going to highlight our engineering management program, which does come from the industrial systems engineering department. Uh, we also have, um, in terms of our student population, so we have almost 6,200 graduate students that do comprise of our master's students, both online and on campus, as well as our PhD students. And in terms of our faculty members, we have 191 tenure track faculty members, many of which have won, won numerous awards, and um, 30 of which are National Academy of Engineering members, which is, you know, one of the, the highest honors you can really receive as an engineer. We also have over 70 National Science Foundation career national and presidential young investigator awardees as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about our research, but we do have over 35 research centers spanning a variety of disciplines. So in terms of our uh, of our ranking, so you know we do get questions from time to time of you know what are you guys ranked? Um, so in terms of our rankings, we are proud to say that we are best engineering graduate school and currently top ten ranked. So that includes both our online and on campus programs. But then specifically in the online rankings arena, um, we are proud of the fact as well that we have been ranked number one for our online graduate computer information information technology program or computer science program. And that actually is for the eighth time in a row. And in terms of the online graduate engineering program, we have consistently been ranked a top ranked um, program in that, uh, in that uh, ranking as well. And then if any of you, I did see a couple of you are, are veterans or active duty military, but this may um, be of interest to you. So um, we are also ranked number one for our online graduate computer science program for veterans, as well as a top ranked online graduate engineering program for veterans as well. So in addition, we do like to point out some key points of distinction. So we do have an international reputation for excellence. So really what that means is beyond, you know, your time as a USC student, um, your degree has value no matter where you go. We have partnerships and collaborations with um, a variety of companies and um, uh, government institutions as well um, that really uh, deliver, you know, that international reputation and, and provide um, so much access beyond just here in the U.S. Um, and in terms of our Trojan Family Network, you may or may not be familiar with this Trojan Family Network, but um, really it's something that's very unique and special. Um, it really gives you access to over 77,000 engineers that have, you know, graduated either a long time ago or just recently. And, you know, time and time again, you know, no matter where I go um, for work, you know, travel for work, you know, there's always, um, uh, partnership or connections that are made and um, Trojans helping out one another. So it's a huge perk. Um, also, we have a variety of engineering degree programs offered, everything from online, on site, and on campus. And those range from our bachelor's degrees all the way up to our PhD programs. And we also offer short courses and custom programs, which is falls into our executive education arm, and, and that includes our non-degree continuing education offerings as well. So as I mentioned, in addition, we are a leader in funded research. So, you know, we have, the Viterbi School has a long history of doing absolutely phenomenal research in a variety of different areas. Um, a lot of the, the research conducted is interdisciplinary. And so they span a variety of different areas, everything from artificial intelligence to AI, through, you know, um, vision sciences, automated construction, photonics. So pretty much, you know, any area of research uh, within engineering computer science, um, there's, a ch there's a high chance that we are conducting research in one of those areas in over 35 different research centers that we have. And um, we do also have a number of industrial partnerships and collaboration that have inspired these research opportunities. So if you are interested in research, we do encourage you to go to our Viterbi School website to find out more, there is actually a search function. So if you're looking for research in a particular area, you can definitely find it through our website as well. 
But now I'm going to introduce you to Professor Giza Botlick. He is our director of the MS in Engineering Management program, as I mentioned earlier. He has degrees in mechanical engineering and graduate degrees from USC. He also has 34 years of industry experience. 24 of those years were at Xerox. And so he has expertise in, you know, all different areas, you know, spanning from computer design, industrial engineering management, strategic planning, and finance, as well as over 30 years at USC. Um, and that spans production planning, statistics, project management, engineering economy, supply chain design, amongst others. And so, you know, we are so happy again, um, Professor Botlick, for you to join us today. Um, and we're very excited to have you um, talk a little bit about, about the program. So with that being said, uh, let's go forward. And I do want to make one quick note before you um, get started, is um, that, you know, this information is cur as of current um, today, which is November 2nd, 2020. Um, but you'll always want to make sure to consult the USC catalog for the most up-to-date information. Because if you're watching this, you know, a, a couple months down the, the line or a year from now, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you have all the, the correct and most up-to-date information. But with that being said, I will hand it over to Professor Botlick. Hi everyone, I'm so glad you could actually uh, actually join us. Uh, all the years of experience, I have to tell you that there was some overlap between my time at Xerox and time at USC, so I'm not quite sure that that, that actually looks. Um, uh, this is my 31st year teaching at Xerox, at uh, USC, and see I still got Xerox on the mind sometimes, but uh, it's been uh, actually 20 26 years since I retired from the rocks, and uh, it was a very nice ride, but uh, USC is a lot more fun. So, um, uh, as you can see, my degrees are in, in mechanical engineering, and one of the things I would encourage all of you is not to worry about what your undergraduate degree was in, because it's really the only important thing is that you went to a good program and, uh, and graduated uh, so you're eligible to uh, go to graduate school uh, because even the, the, the areas that we teach in engineering management um, are not particularly dependent on anything specific from a prior um, prior era. Uh, the slide you're looking at uh, really talks about of, uh, why do we have this this program, and the reason is that you know, many engineers wind up as managers, even if you're not an actual manager with all kinds of direct responsibilities for budgets and reviews and so forth, many of you will also be in charge of projects and have technicians or draftsmen and designers reporting to you. So the chances are you need some sort of management skills. And, um, and uh, generally, statistically, a third of engineers actually really become engineer uh, managers. And unfortunately, many of them are unprepared to be managers. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's such a difficult area, but believe me, it really takes some background knowledge about people's behaviors, about how projects are managed, how finances are run, how money is invested, where your salary comes from. All of those things are, are important to know. And that's what this program is about. It's to prepare you for these things. Okay? It's intended for both recent graduates who are not necessarily going to get their first management job when they graduate, but eventually they'll be better prepared and more promotable into management positions. Those who are already working engineers are aspiring to be managers, obviously will benefit. And if you are already a manager, it never hurts to learn more and, uh, and it still would enhance your careers and your knowledge and your ability. The other thing that, of course, it does, you make sure you maintain a completely working engineer without any supervisory responsibilities. It makes you a better engineer to understand how management is actually run. So if I can have the next slide. All right, next slide. Oh, thank you. Okay. And um, I think I kind of went through this one. Um, but I would also want to mention that our program uh, generally averages about 150 students who are on 
campus. Uh, we sometimes have as little as 50 graduates, sometimes well over 100. So it does vary uh, quite a bit. Um, much of it is actually depending on employability, right? If, uh, if uh, times are really, really good, a lot of people with bachelors go right to work and kind of pass up going to graduate school until until later. Uh, as it says, about 20% of the students are off campus. Of course, being a COVID semester, all our students are off campus currently. Uh, we certainly hope to have many of you back in the, in the spring. Uh, no real decisions have been made. Uh, our ability to be open and uh, be an open campus for students in the spring heavily depends on Los Angeles County and the health department because they are the ones that actually control whether you can have classes or not. We are certainly prepared to have on campus classes. Okay. Uh, we have full time professors like myself, right? And we also have industry experience, most of them with substantial teaching experience. Most of our part time industry experts have been with us for 10, 15, some as many as 30 years. And so they have as much teaching experience as uh, any full time professors. Right? And uh, we clearly place people in all kinds of positions. Currently, uh, supply chain jobs. Are, are very much available, so are uh, analytics jobs. But uh, when I look at our graduates, they're in all kinds of places, right? Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, now uh, the uh, we have been for the last, uh, let's see, since 2012, so it's been for eight years, we're a member of what's, uh, what is called the MEMPC, the um, Masters of Engineering Management Programs uh, Consortium, and uh, that includes uh, uh, Cornell, Dartmouth, uh, Duke, MIT, um, Purdue, uh, John Hopkins, and Tufts. I think I managed all of them. And uh, uh, I happen to be on the executive board that runs that consortium. And, uh, and what it does, it creates a much, much larger um, network. Obviously, you have a huge network of, engine, of USC graduates. But this particular network cuts across those other universities, and uh, they're all people in with degrees in engineering management. So it's an extremely useful um, uh, a group to be part of. Right? The other one is the EMSA, Engineering Management Student Association. Uh, I don't know if you can see me, but I'm wearing one of their shirts. And uh, it's a very active group. They invite companies to give talks on campus on, about jobs. We have uh, extra seminars. I'm currently preparing a seminar in um, advanced Excel usage that's gonna be on two weeks from now. Uh, I've done those in, uh, in, uh, in uh, supply chain design. I have other uh, um, professors who've done that in investing in projects. Uh, so those are beyond the regular curriculum. They're usually extremely well attended. The last time I did an Excel one, I had 60 students attended. Of course, that was live. Uh, this one is going to be on Zoom, but I fully expect to have at least that many students. Uh, the, it's open to any uh, graduate student in, um, in industrial and systems engineering. And in non-COVID times, we also have physical get-togethers and, and uh, evening uh, get-togethers at uh, neighborhood restaurants, so um, very, very active and very well run a student organization. Next slide, please. Okay, oh, there's uh, nine universities, so you can see that on the slides. I don't think, I did not miss it. Oh, I missed Northwestern. Okay. All right, uh, on to the next one. Okay, so uh, here's the meat, right? Uh, we. Um, uh, let me uh, run through these classes with a little bit of introduction to each one of those. Okay. Uh, we have uh, a base a base of uh, four classes which are all required. And um, one is my statistics uh, class, uh, which I've been teaching for, oh my gosh, since, uh, well, I forget uh, how long, probably, uh, probably 2007, 2008 was the first semester that I taught it. I, I'm the one who created that class, and it's really aimed at teaching you enough statistics to use it for decision making. And obviously decision making is a huge part of being a manager. Project management, very popular class. Um, 
and kind of self-explanatory, although we might want to realize that a good part of that is about behaviors, uh, how, how engineers behave, how managers behave, how they make decisions, and the rest of it is actually how to run a project. Okay. Uh, leading and managing engineering teams is heavily into behavior and team formation, team behavior, team decision making. I do a fair amount of research in that area in terms of how people do uh, behave within teams. And finally, economic analysis, which basically says, how do companies decide which projects to invest in? Very important for engineers because you want your project to be funded. And so as long as I advanced economic analysis. Um, then we have uh, two uh, areas in which we require one course. One is analytics. It's really the hottest field going right now next to supply chain. And you can choose uh, one class. Uh, right now we got two classes listed there, uh, but uh, we have since expanded that into two or three other classes, all dealing with analytics. And so there's a wide variety of choices available within that group. And the other one is in uh, technology. And there too, I think we've added a couple of classes. And uh, so, um, so, so that gives a total of six classes, which leaves you with four more, which we're going to look at on the next slide. Okay, so we have tracks, right? And uh, each track consists of, uh, of either uh, nine or 10 units. Now, uh, you notice that sometimes there are four unit classes, which gives you an odd number of units. But um, in this particular case, if you choose that management track, you wind up with an extra unit there, which cuts one unit out of your elective. Um, okay, uh, I'll discuss electives in a moment. Uh, the supply and operations track uh, has inventory systems, advanced production planning and scheduling, which is my favorite. I started teaching in that class and I've taught it 36 times. And it's currently being taught by Professor Gupta and she uses my textbook that I wrote for that. And we have very popular enterprise-wide information systems, which is basically what used to be called MRP, but it's much wider, and that's a very, very popular class as well. Um, and uh, and then lastly, uh, right, yeah, you can, uh, let's see, we are, you know, what's missing on here is the technology track. Okay, well, there's one more track that's called technology, and it's, uh, it's actually about invention, about entrepreneurship and running technology projects. And last but certainly not least, if you want to create your own custom track, uh, you and I can sit down together or Zoom together, whichever one is necessary, and we can go through all the classes that may be, and uh, we can actually create a custom track in your own expertise. Let's say that you don't really want to get a master's, let's say in civil engineering, but you would like to actually increase your knowledge in that area, we can, we can pick three uh, civil engineering graduate classes to form a custom track that's consistent. Okay. Which leaves us with an elective, right, which is wide open. I tend to approve just about anything that makes and has anything to do with engineering or management. Um, and many students choose to do internships. Uh, we generally have, I would say, probably at least 20 students doing internships every semester, many times more. Uh, as uh, Aaron pointed out earlier, there are a tremendous number of both small and large companies located in Southern California. And of course, if you're doing the elective in the summer, you can get, you can go anywhere in the country, and many companies will actually support you with um, with allowances for housing besides paying you. So, um, and uh, in general, if you're an in in international student, you do need to be supervised by faculty on the selected units, and I'm um, available, so are any one of our other professors. I average about 10 to 15 students a, sem uh, a semester who I uh, actually supervise as a, uh, in an internship. Given COVID, we have fewer with people actually in inter internships but nevertheless, there's still a fair number, number of them. Okay, next slide. 
Okay, uh, I'm very, very proud of having created this about six or seven years ago, much at the encouragement of our dean, um, is to create dual master's programs. A uh, big advantage here is that instead of having to take 60 units or 48 units, you actually get two full degrees. Right? Obviously, each one includes master's of, in engineering management, but in aerospace, mechanical, electrical, or petroleum, so you can actually, now you have to be admitted to both departments, and then uh, we in the industri industrial engineering, we supervise uh, both the, all these dual degree programs, so they're still pretty much under my, um, under my leadership. Okay, next slide. Oh, there was one more thing on the dual degrees. Uh, currently, actually in my ISC 500 class, I have six petroleum engineering, uh, engineering students. Uh, recently, that's been the most popular um, as a second degree. The, the other more very popular one is generally mechanical engineer. Okay, go ahead, next slide. Okay, what do they do? Well, uh, most of them, <laughs> when they're in school, they study, and they do internships, and once they graduate, they work, and they work just about anywhere. Um, I would say the most popular recently, obviously, has been in supply chain. Uh, with a lot of in recent increase in analytics, uh, people go to, we have people who go to the large companies like, uh, like, like Twitter and Google and Microsoft, uh, the supply chain ones, you know, we got, um, as the Target is a large one. And, uh, so, uh, we have lots of people at, at Microsoft, but I would say it's really difficult to say where they go because they go just about everywhere. We have lots of people who go to small startups. Every once in a while, somebody starts their own company. Um, so I think they're all very well prepared for for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for the corporate world. And a few of them, of course, uh, they go on to PhDs and academic careers. Okay, next one. Okay, so well, thank you so much, Professor Botlick, for all those details about the engineering management program. I know that there is some exciting, very you know, great changes there. So thank you for talking about that. And there will be um, there will be some time, like as as I mentioned before, to ask any additional questions. So I did see a number of you already asking questions. So thank you. Um, just please be sure to use the Q and A panel rather than the chat. That way we can see your questions a lot quicker and be sure to answer your questions. Um, but I'm also going to talk about, you know, how the process of applying and enrollment options for those of you that are looking to get started as early as possible. Um, again, keeping in mind that the information presented is as of today, again, November 2nd. So just you always want to make sure to consult the prospective graduate student website for information about um, application deadlines, enrollment info, um, and all the other um, program information as well. So for application criteria specifically for the Master of Science in Engineering Management. So an undergraduate degree in engineering math or hard science from a regionally accredited university is required. So during the application process, you would need to submit copies of your tr official transcripts um, that you can upload through the application itself. Um, and to be competitive, although it's not required, we do recommend a cumul cumulative undergraduate GPA of at least a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. Um, but again, it's recommended. So, you know, if you don't quite have that 3.0 GPA, um, we do encourage you to still apply. Um, we just also encourage you to strengthen your application in areas that you can as much as possible. So, you know, there's a variety of different other elements of the application, which I'll talk about in a bit, that you can also I mean, use I, uh, Interrupt you for a second about uh, no the GPA. Mm -hmm. And admissions. Um, the, um, I do not um, actually run admi admissions to the program. We have an admissions department that does that. But in the marginal cases, they send them to me and I re review them. So if you have extenuating circumstances and you don't have a high GPA, you're probably going to get looked at and get a serious look. Okay. So I thought I'd mention that. Yes, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. 
And, um, and this is an important update um, as of uh, September 30th, but due to the challenges uh, for applicants in taking the GRE due to the current pandemic, the GRE exam will not be required for the spring, summer, and fall 2021 applications to, to the USC Viterbi graduate program. So um, you will not need to submit a GRE exam scores for um, those semesters. But we also will require a CV or resume. So um, that is something that you would upload through the application itself, as well as a personal statement. So those are, that's, those are both areas where you can, you know, really um, highlight certain areas of your application that go beyond your GPA. In addition, three letters of recommendation are highly recommended. So, um, you know, those can come from uh, whether they're faculty member, former faculty members, or, um, you know, a manager or supervisor from a, a company that you work for, um, you are welcome to have those submitted on your behalf. And in addition, a to the TOEFL is also required for international applicants. Um, so we do encourage you again, and especially for those that are watching this presentation after the fact, um, we do really encourage you to visit the program page to, um, to find additional details about the individual requirements for the Master of Science in Engineering Management. So in terms of application deadlines, so we did have the spring 2021 application deadline that did pass um, technically on September 15th. However, if you are um, planning to pursue your program online via Denet Viterbi, you are welcome to reach out to denetviterbi.usc.edu. That goes to my colleague Megan and I, and um, we can assist you if you require additional time for any given application period. Um, so for fall 2021, the deadline to submit all required materials is January 15th of 2021. And the deadline for scholarship consideration, and this is specifically for our on-campus applicants, um, the deadline is gonna be December 15th. So that's coming up. Um, in addition, if you know fall 2021, which starts in August is too soon for you, spring 2022, which sounds very far away, but actually not that far away at all. Um, the deadline to submit all required materials is gonna be September 15th of next year. And the deadline for the scholarship consideration for on-campus uh, applicants is going to be August 31st. So you have a couple of options in terms of course delivery. And so some of you may or may not know about this, but I do want to spend some time to talk about the options that you have. First and foremost, you do have the option of, you know, becoming or being an on-campus a student that goes uh, and takes courses full time. So many of our on-campus students do take, um, you know, a course, their course load is full time, but um, it's not necessarily required. It just depends on, you know, um, on your current student status. But, you know, um, two classes per semester is often the case, um, sometimes even more, and um, they tend to graduate about uh, one and a half to two years to complete their degree. Um, but for online um, students that pursue their program via Dena Viterbi, because the large majority of our online students are working full time, they do tend to take one or two courses per semester. But it's flexible. So, you know, if you want to, if you're pursuing your program online via Dena Viterbi, you don't necessarily have to be working. So if you would like to, you know, take more than, than that, um, you're welcome to. So, uh, but on average, the time to completion is about two and a half to three years um, for our online Denim Viterbi applicants. I should say students. <laughs> um, and in terms of how our online Denim Viterbi delivery method works. So we know, we recognize you know, there's a lot of different online platforms out there, especially right now, given the current situation. Um, but, you know, we do like to point out the fact that Dena Viterbi, we have been in the distance education arena for well over 40 years um, before, you know, the online arena even happened. But um, Dena Viterbi is a proprietary web-based system. It's something that's unique 
specific to the USC Viterbi School, and it is our um, web-based delivery system that is considered a blended model in the sense that um, we, our online students are in the same exact courses and in the same exact program as the on-campus students. So what that means is our Den of Viterbi students actually have more flexibility in terms of how they watch the lectures. So, so the first way is that they're able to watch the lectures live as they happen on a normal basis on USC's campus. And the great thing about that is that you can actually call in during the live lecture. So, you know, if you have a question for Professor Botlick, you could call in during that session and ask your questions right on the spot. Um, you can also use the Q&A um, chat function as well. Um, but at the same time, we recognize that, you know, whether your, you know, work schedule may not um, always uh, align well with the schedule or, you know, you might be out in a different time zone where, you know, it might be 2 a.m. for you and it just doesn't work. Um, so in that case, we also have um, course recordings of each of the lectures. So um, after the lecture takes place, it then goes into what's called the course archives, and you would be able to watch those lectures, you know, as many times as you need to up until the end of the semester. So it is, you know, also a great setting tool for our students. In addition, um, another option once possible, once, you know, the students are back on campus safely, we all, you also have the option to come to campus and sit in on lectures. So all of our Den of Viterbi students have a student classroom, so that is also a possibility, but it is not required. So you do not have to step foot on campus as a, a Den of Viterbi student. Many of our students never step foot on campus, and that's completely fine. And some other things that we'll point out. Um, so in terms of the exams, so on a normal basis, if you are located in the Los Angeles, Orange, or Ventura County areas, you would take your exams on USC's campus. However, you know, we know, recognize a number of our, our online students are not in those areas. And so for that reason, they take their exams at a proctored location. Um, that can be a community college, a local library, a proctoring test center. Um, we also have corporate proctoring. So if your company is willing, somebody in your company is willing to proctor your examinations on site, that's also a possibility. So there's a lot of different options, and we do have a dedicated Denver Viterbi exams coordinating office and coordinator that specifically um, assists our Denver Viterbi students in case they need assistance in finding a proctor location, in addition to, you know, if they ever have to travel for work and need to take their exams uh, in, a, in a different place than normal. So this gives you a behind the scenes look at what our Den of Viterbi classrooms typically look like. So behind the scenes, there is a camera operator. Um, they are connected to our network control team that really is there to support our Den of Viterbi students. Um, they really are the eyes and ears making sure that, you know, everything that's going on in the classroom, um, that you can see the faculty member, you can see their notes up close, um, just as good if not better than what you would see in the classroom. Um, they also make sure that the audio is working properly, that you can hear everything on your end, but also at the same time that the students within the classroom are able to hear you if you ask, if you call in to ask any questions as well. So, you know, that's just really speaking to just a part of the full Den of Viterbi support team that we do have and um, that support all of our online students on top of, you know, all the services that we provide to all of our students, whether online or on campus. So some additional info that we would like to, you know, point out. Um, so we also have what's called limited status. Um, limited status is an enrollment option that's great for those that want to get a jump start in taking classes. You could do so as early as the upcoming spring 2021 semester, which starts in January of, uh, of next year of 2021. Um, but in order to be qualified, you would need to have an undergraduate degree in engineering math or hard science or related fields from a regionally accredited institution with a cumulative GPA of at least a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. So that's where it is different from formal mission. You do have to have that 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. If you don't have that, um, you know, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to take courses as a limited status student, but we encourage you to apply for formal admission directly. Um, that way, your application could be um, reviewed in a comprehensive manner. Um, limited status is limited in the sense that you are only able to take a maximum of 12 units. 
Um, but if you later on decide to apply for formal admission, and if you are wanting to um, fully you know, pursue a graduate degree program, you would still need to formally apply. Um, limited status does not guarantee formal admission. However, if you do apply for formal admission later on and are admitted, then the courses that you take towards that particular degree program would then as a limited status student would then be counted as a formally admitted student if you are admitted. So we do encourage you to find out more details about limited status enrollment. Again, as I mentioned earlier, for those of you that joined us more recently, um, for those of you that are watching this recording in the future, um, I will, so I will be sending a PDF um, copy of the slides. In addition, it will be on our website. So um, if you are watching a video recording of this, you probably also have been able to see the presentation. There's slides that are on our website as well, and we can direct you to that um, if, you need, if you need that right away. Um, in addition, we also have the Employer Reimbursement Deferment Program. So this is a program that's great for, you know, students whose companies may pay up to 90% of their tuition, um, or so they pay, I should say, they reimburse them for their tuition. But um, this is great if you don't want to pay out of pocket initially. Um, so you can actually defer your upfront payment until after the semester is over. So up to 90% of your tuition can be um, deferred. Um, but in order to do that, you do need to, um, your employer needs to reimburse you for tuition at the end of each term and your student account must be a current. Also, you will need to complete the requirements listed below there, and um, we encourage you to visit the website up for more information about that option. So this gives you an idea of the current tuition rate. So I'm um, uh, recognizing that, you know, the engineering management program is third unit, so you could take that, you know, that per unit cost um, by that third unit to get a rough estimate of how much the program would cost. But if you have um, want to look into more detailed details regarding tuition and fees, we do encourage you to go to our website there, and that will always have the most up-to-date information because it is scheduled, it is subject to change. So getting started, um, so you know, hopefully you all have visited our website already, but um, if you uh, want to get started as an on-campus student, we do encourage you, there's a number of um, ways that you can connect with our on-campus team. So some alternatives to coming to visit the campus given um, the current pandemic are listed at the link there. Also, to start your formal admission application, um, we do encourage you to start with applying for formal admission. And um, if you are interested in taking classes online with Denver Turby, again, also, you know, start um, your application for formal admission. Again, if you need an application extension and you're planning to pursue your program fully online with Denver Turby, you can reach out to us at denverturby.usc.edu. Um, and then in addition, if you would like to get started as a limited status student as early as spring 2021, we do encourage you to, again, you know, um, go to the limited status link that we provided early, earlier, um, but also to complete the Denver Derby profile, which would enable you to confirm whether or not you are approved for, um, to take courses as early as the spring 2021 semester. All right, so now we get the opportunity to chat uh, with Professor Botlick, who's always such a, uh, Fantastic um, panelist, as his, you know, as his own <laughs> um, expertise really provides that information for all of you. So I'm going to, you know, just start out um, with some of the questions um, that we have received prior to the session. So, um, you know, the first question that I have for you, um, Professor Botlick, is, you know, we do get, um, and we've received this number of questions um, multiple times from prospective students, but, you know, a lot of our students are interested in, um, they're not sure if, you know, an MBA degree would be the right path for them or, or if the engineering management degree would be better for them. So, you know, can you give some insight into, you know, the differences between those options and, um, and you know, what specifically um, the engineering management program really offers, you know, in comparison to, say, an MBA program or a related uh, management program? One moment, I think you're on mute. Hold on. That's okay, why. Go ahead. That's why I couldn't interrupt you before. You had to do it. Okay. All right. Now, well, let me answer this. Uh, this one. Well, first, let me go back to the uh, limited student because uh, 
uh, I want to pass on that I was a limited student. I, it was in August when I decided to go back to graduate school, and of course it was too late to apply for the fall semester. So I ended up getting started as a limited student, got admitted for spring term uh, after taking nine units and getting three A's, of course, in the in the fall semester. And um, so then um, I wound up staying for five years and getting two degrees. Okay, MBA. MBA is just that, right? It's a master's in business administration, which means that people go into finance, into accounting, into all the business functions, marketing. So they're not engineering functions, right? And so the point about an engineering management degree is that you intend to manage engineers. Now, if you want to go switch into finance, right? Well, then by all means, get an MBA, right? Um, actually, if you're interested in an MBA and an engineering degree, our, uh, our department has a joint, uh, has a, uh, a dual degree of industrial and systems engineering masters and an MBA. So that would be another program that you might want to go to. Uh, but in general, since I'm talking to engineers, most of you probably want to stay as engineers or manage engineers. Um, in that case, you're much better off with an engineering management uh, degree. Uh, in addition to that, many MBA programs are 60 degree, 60 units, and they also tend to be on campus, they, they, although it doesn't mean that there aren't any distance ones. But the really good ones are almost all on campus, so they're a little bit less uh, accessible. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. So I have a question from the audience. Um, so can you explain a little bit more about internship opportunities? Okay. Well, the way internships work, right, you are the one who needs to find a job. Now, I'm available to give you a list of potential employers. Uh, you, of course, can go to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, days when we have companies on campus, which generally are extremely well attended. And of course, now they're all on Zoom. And uh, incidentally, uh, the, uh, the uh, consortium actually had a uh, a job fair uh, just last, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And we had six companies and also about 100 students actually attend. Now, I don't know anybody got jobs on that. I certainly hope that they did. But we have job fairs on campus. We have. Uh, we have com companies come to campus. The Engineering Management Student Association invites companies specifically to come and talk to the engineering management students. And like I said, I can steer you in the direction of companies that have a history of hiring, hiring our students. Um, and in general, I think the vast majority of people who want an internship find one. If you're an international student, which Many of you are. You need to be supervised. And if you can't find another supervisor, I'm always available. Okay. Great. Thank you. That was really helpful. Um, and then also another question, audience, is uh, what will be the average class size that you see? The average what? Class size, the average class size. Oh, the class size. Okay. Well, that's one of the nicest things about our system is that we don't have hardly any classrooms that have more than 40 chairs. And the fire department is murdered by people who put extra chairs in rooms. So, yes, we limit almost all our classes to 40 students. Every once in a while we have something bigger, but ordinarily what I will do is we simply find another instructor and we split the class. So you're unlikely to be in a bigger group than 40 students. Great. Now, my okay. current mm -hmm. final class, by the way, is 31 students. Oh, great. Thank you for that. Um, in addition, another question is, um, so, you know, what classes would be required for a degree to be considered an engineering math or hard science degree? So maybe, you know, if a, a student, the applicant doesn't necessarily have, you know, um, what would be technically considered engineering math or science, what types of courses would you be look, would, um, be well, looked for? Uh, I would say, uh, number one, uh, I think uh, the single most important, of course, are math classes. And I would certainly expect somebody to have at least three, three semesters of math. 
uh, generally calculus one, two, three, uh, really helpful to have in your algebra, but not necessarily required. Uh, basically, what I look for, which is especially when I review marginal applications, is not only how many math classes you had, but how well you did in them, right? And uh, so that lays the foundation. Now, clearly, uh, in a normal, uh, well, you know, I don't want to say normal because programs vary widely. Uh, certainly, my experience as an undergraduate was nine units in physics and uh, not nine, 12 units in physics, eight units in chemistry, and uh, mm -hmm. and I think actually I had, uh, let's see, uh, three times six, I had, I think, 22 or 24 units in math, so, which is a heavy load, right? So I don't expect that many. Basically, three math, three math classes, at least one or two physics or chemistry or biology classes. Great. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, in addition, is um, can you talk a little bit about the career pathways? I know you talked a little bit about it already, but um, if there's any other additional information you can provide regarding, you know, just the types of career pathways that people take after graduating. Well, and let, let me put it this way: if you're uh, if you're coming in as an undergraduate with, uh, let's say, one or two years of experience of working or no experience at all of working, and then you should really expect to get a job in your expert, in your area of bachelor's degree. So if you're a civil engineer, get a civil engineering job. If you're a mechanical engineer, get a job in that area. Uh, the best path to management is to become really good at what you do in your own field, right? So generally, uh, I would say a normal progression after three, maybe four years of working as an engineer, you should get in a management job if you so desire. Right? And what this degree does is once you decide that you want to do that, you can then transition and end up. So that would be if you're coming in as a master. If you already been working for any number of years, it doesn't really matter how many, well, I would say you know, less than 27, but most people who come in uh, without a management job and already in the workforce tend to have anywhere from three to five to seven years of experience. Those people are ready to be promoted. So uh, I would say that some of them get promoted while they're getting the degree. Some of them, of course, have their tuition paid by their company because their company feels that they're going to be promotable. Mm -hmm. so that would be another and, uh, of course, if you're a first-level manager and you aspire to become a second-level manager, getting a degree like this should give your career a real push. Great. Thank you. Um, another one is, does work experience matter to USC as a metric while shortlisting a candidate or a student has held a lot of leadership and managerial positions at his undergraduate institution suffice? So basically, yeah, in a nutshell, does, you know, does work experience um, play into, you know, um, your candidacy as a, as an applicant? Well, uh, not, not exactly, because you see, the, the, the uh, success in the program um, is heavily dependent on being well prepared in basic engineering. It, that basically means math and science. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we really look for, right? The fact of whether you're employed or not is really not an issue, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, if, if I had an unemployed or employed engineer and uh, uh, the same in all other respects, uh, I don't know what admissions would do, but I would pick the one that was already employed. Right? Uh, so, um, but anyway, it's not like being promoted at work, that you, your history of work experience is, is very important. What we really look for, uh, not for GRE now because of COVID, but in general, uh, GPA, the institution where you went, and uh, and your uh, GRE, especially in the quantitative section. And if you're an international student, then your language capability comes into it as well. Gotcha. Great. Maybe one more thing about uh, international students. Uh, I was not an international student because uh, I had already immigrated and had become a citizen before going to graduate school. Uh, but English is not my first language. It's my third language. I was born in Hungary. I grew up in Germany. 
and I had to learn English when I got here. So I have great faith in people's ability to pick up another language. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, another one is, is it possible to complete this program in a year if somebody, someone were to do fall, spring, and summer? Uh, I would say no. I, I'll tell you, I, I did it, uh, not in that amount of time. I was working full time for my master when I was getting my master's. I took three classes a semester and worked full time. And so I was able to do three semesters and a summer in between. And that, I think, is pretty well the minimum, uh, whether you're on campus or not. Certainly would not recommend it if you're off campus. My, my judgment was very clouded when I did that. I would say that if you're on campus, then a year and a half with the summer in between is very rational. Uh, I cannot see how you could do it in two semesters and a summer. Um, who knows? Uh, you know, if you sleep six hours a day and you don't have anything else to do, then go ahead and try it. I certainly don't recommend it. Got it. Um, and then this is specific to the data analytics. Um, is there a track or certain dedicated electives available available for us to choose from? I'll say that again, please. So for the data analytics, is there a track or certain dedicated electives available for us to choose from? Right. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, the, the the analytics track, um, uh, as of right now, uh, it's in the process of being approved, but it's already gone through the school. Uh, we extended expanded the choices to five classes, and uh, that's um, so you could choose you could choose three of those right uh, to mm -hmm. create a track, and you can choose another one to uh, to satisfy the requirement. That's four of them. And then you still have an elective, so you could actually take five analytics classes if that's what you want to do. Great. And this is actually a, a question directed for you, Professor Bach, like um, about your your role. So what was your, uh, was were your roles at Xerox? Um, did you get to apply specific content from your master's in injury management to your job at Xerox? And what did you well, learn it, during that job? The mm -hmm. quick answer is, I did not get a master's in engineering management, so I had no chance to apply that. But uh, very briefly, uh, for the first few years, I was designing computer hardware when Xerox was still in the computer business. From there, I went to the research center in Palo Alto, where I did research in uh, particle physics, an attachment of dielectric, the electrons to dielectrics, uh, really off offbeat direction. That job stopped. I became a manager of an operation and uh, engineering operation in um, assembling uh, electronics. Uh, when that ended, I became the industrial and systems engineering manager for three factories. When that ended, I went into finance for the last six years when I uh, uh, ran investments for Xerox on the West Coast. And then I retired. <laughs> Love it. Um, and then this one is about our dual degree program. So can you extend a little bit more about the 12 credits um, for the, um, uh, for, you know, on the injury management side? Okay. Very, very simply stated, right? Um, you need to take the core ISE, math, the engineering management classes. So that's six classes. That leaves four more, right? Uh, for, for to be, to be used towards Whatever you want to do, right? Now that those six classes account for 18 units, that makes it available if you want to spend all those on your other other masters, or you can um, and, and uh, whatever they require, and then we can negotiate as to how to split up the rest of the units. But it's it's possible to use 18 units in engineering management and 30 units in your own field. Great. Well, we're almost at the end here, but I do want to have one last question. So, um, which is, you know, what makes your program more attractive than, say, you know, Cornell or Dartmouth programs or other programs out there? You know, it's amazing how different the programs actually are. And that's why the consortium works, because we, it, essentially we don't steal students from each other, right? Uh, and that's because we're very different, right? MIT wants five years of experience. Northwestern wants three years of experience. Dartmouth is all on campus. 
Uh, Duke is a very large program, more than 200 students. Um, uh, Cornell uh, is a very small program. In uh, uh, Ithaca is a lovely town, but it's a very small town in a very rural area. So, um, so you know, Purdue is a large pr public institution. Um, uh, John Hopkins is really heavily onto uh, um, mostly aerospace uh, science and satellites and robotics. Um, and uh, Tufts um, is more or less into entrepreneurship. So you can see they're all very, very different. And so you really need to look at all of them. And one of them is going to suit you. And uh, we'll, we'll get our, more than our share. <laughs> Great. All right, well, so we're at the end of the session. Um, I do want to, um, of course, thank uh, Professor Botlick. Thank you so much for all your insight and expertise. Um, that was really helpful, all those questions. Um, I do appreciate everyone out there asking all your questions. Um, and, you know, if you didn't get, if you didn't get to ask um, certain questions, we do encourage you to reach out to us via email um, for on-campus students at viterbi.gradadmission at usc.edu, or for those that are planning to pursue their program online via Dana Viterbi, denaviterbi.usc.edu goes to Megan and myself. Um, so we do encourage you to reach out to us with other additional questions. But again, thank you so much, Professor Botlick, um, for taking time out of your busy day. We really appreciate you. And um, thank you so much to everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Goodbye. Bye.